Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the OSU Roundup. Coming up, we're going to talk to Kenny Gajewski, and we're going to spend a little time at the football field and talk a little bit about how spring football is going. But we're going to start out our show with baseball as the Cowboys coming off a sweep over UNC Wilmington. Joining us now, as always, is Coach Josh Holliday. And Coach, a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thank you, Casey. So let's talk a little bit. You know, you and I talked last week. Uh, obviously, Central Arkansas was on the schedule, and and that wasn't going to happen. And then it was a matter of finding someone and getting them in there. And administration came through. You guys, you made a lot of phone calls and, and obviously very thankful to get this weekend series in. Yeah, it ended up being a really good series for us. Uh, the doubleheader was a little bit of a uh, result of kind of the rain and then the projected high winds of upwards of 50 mile an hour gusts. That's not great for baseball. So Saturday ended up being a doubleheader day. It was a beautiful day start to finish. A lot of good baseball played over the course of a split doubleheader. And then uh, we put ourselves in position to head into Sunday uh, with a chance to once again sweep a series. The kids were responsive on Sunday. I thought our pitching was really, really good uh, the whole weekend. Our starting pitching in particular was outstanding. And then, uh, you know, game after game, you're starting to see more and more chances on offense and then more and more guys deliver big hits. So uh, I like the direction that the team continues to go. Uh, I like the depth that's being formed as we uh, have played a lot of the season without some regulars. Those guys start to come back. The, de the depth that we've developed while they've, they've been out has really made us a good team, and it gives us a chance to, to kind of go stare down this last half of the season with a, hopefully a, a full assortment of players and, and a team that's ready to peak. I am curious, Coach. You know, I, I was told uh, in large part, again, the decision Friday was based more on wind than really anything else. Have you ever had a game? I know it affects tennis all the time, but I don't recall baseball ever being altered. We, uh, we one time practiced in the wind, uh, 40 to 50 mile per hour with Gus, and um, there were times when the ball would get hit and the second baseman was going back to catch it and ended up blowing over the right field fence. So sometimes there's a kind of a threshold or a point where the game gets altered to where it's not really the game you set out to play. Obviously, we've played in plenty of windy conditions. Uh, most days it's moving 15 to 20, 25 to 30, but when you start getting up around 45, 50 mile per hour gusts, uh, the entire trajectory of the ball changes and the whole dynamic of the game changes. So we, uh, we had a beautiful day on Saturday. Again, it was sunny. Uh, it was ideal conditions for baseball. Uh, we played well. Our kids went out and, and pitched it, caught it clean, and hit it pretty good. So I thought all three of those games definitely elevated us as a team. Well, in the game, first game on Saturday, 7-6. And so you were pushed a little bit, too. So you got challenged. You got W's. You got them all in. I mean, again, everything you want out of, out of that kind of a weekend. Yeah, you know, game one got a little interesting. Uh, Parker had a great start. Uh, we went to the bullpen. Cable threw the ball really good in the eighth inning. He came out in the ninth and couldn't quite find the strike zone. Then we asked our closer to essentially navigate a bases loaded, nobody out situation. And uh, they, they, they put three balls in play. They found some base hits. And next thing you know, we're staring at a, a nail biter. But Brett Stanley once again rose to the occasion. He showed great courage on the mound. Uh, he made his pitches, and we kind of uh, eluded what was a very, very strong UNC Wilmington rally in the ninth to win that game. Uh, come back in the night cap, Justin Campbell once again throws the ball extremely well. We swing the bats good. Uh, so Saturday, you know, a lot of baseball, but a lot to be uh, excited about, a lot to build on. And then, uh, you know, the Sunday game, Robleski once again pitched another nice ball game for us. Uh, we swung the bats. There were some, some big swings of the bat. I thought uh, Encarnacion's homer. Uh, along with Nolan McLean's homer. Uh, those were big swings. And then uh, McCusker's had a big impact on the lineup since he's returned. So those guys were forced in the middle of the lineup, and we've had a lot of guys kind of uh, starting to swing the bat. I thought Cabinet swung the bat this weekend in particular, about as good as he ever has since he's been here. He was really on the ball, uh, really staying through the middle of the field. His power was showing up, putting the ball in play, taking walks. So I thought K was really outstanding as well. So it improves you to 21-7-1 and one on the season. Then, Coach, before you get ready to go take on TCU, you've got the, the, the tilt with ORU. Ends up being a no decision, which, you know, the biggest shame in that, again, whether you would have gotten the win, it certainly felt like momentum was headed your way and you were going to get the win. But Bryce Osman, his nine strikeouts through five innings are unofficial now because it doesn't go in the books. But, boy, he was having a great night for you. Yeah, it's official in his mind because he knows what he – was doing. He knows how he was executing. He knows how he was competing. He knows that he was uh, working at a very high level and that's growth and that's the kind of confidence and, and learning curve that goes with us whether it's on the stat sheet or not. It's cemented in our own thought process and that's the, the place where we're most uh, 
excited that he knows, hey, I can go out and execute pitches at a very high level. I have a chance to be a dominant pitcher. So, uh, yeah, strange game. I can't say I've ever been a part of a no contest. Um, I didn't sleep super easy last night just trying to wrap my hands around it. But uh, Mother Nature rolled in, rolled in with lightning, rolled in with rain, and, and left us kind of standing there waiting to see what would happen. So it is what it is. I guess in a year like this, you, you kind of prepare for just about anything. Yeah, tied up, two on, no out, and the bottom of the fifth had a chance. And that, if you get the, you know, get there, get the lead, it is official. You've been part of a tie this year, yes. So you just chalk it up to, to this season. Let's talk about TCU real quickly, though, Coach. Obviously, this is uh, this is one of the contenders in the league. This is going to be a it's going to be a heck of a series for you guys. Oh yeah, very good ball club, a lot of talent, and uh, very well coached. Always have been uh, at their place. Uh, you know, good atmosphere to play ball. Really talented opponent. St strong starting pitching. A couple of good relief pitchers and a lineup full of very good athletes. So, should be another great challenge for us, uh, but one that we're ready for. We just got to go down and continue to do the things that make us. Uh, go, continue to get good starting pitching, uh, develop that timely hitting throughout the game. And, and then uh, you're going to have to win a one-run game. You're probably going to have to win a game as well where you out-hit them a little bit. So there's going to be some challenges for us. But uh, our group's up to it. These guys have been responsive all year, and we're looking forward to heading down there and playing what should be a, a marquee matchup across the country. Yeah, no doubt about it. 6.30 on Friday, 2 o'clock on Saturday, 1 o'clock on Sunday, all three games are on ESPN Plus if you don't make the trek down to Fort Worth. Coach, appreciate the time. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Let's take a break. What's happening on the Diamond on softball's concern as far as they're concerned? We'll talk to Kenny Gajewski coming up next. you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store Welcome back to the show. Let's talk what's happening on the softball side. Kitty Gajewski joins us now and coach always a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thank you. Big weekend. Boy, you guys went out to West Texas, and we talked last week. You never know what you're going to get in, in uh, Lubbock, but you guys went out there, really had a really good performance, came away with three wins, and that's a good weekend. Yeah, it was really fun. We, I'm really happy the way our girls perform. They've been working hard. Carrie got us going on Friday night, and Cheyenne had the big home run in the, the seventh to uh, seal that game, a 1-0 game, which is not uncommon in this conference on a – on a Friday night, and then uh, over the weekend, our, our bats really came alive and really, really uh, feels good to watch these kids perform and, and watch their hard work pay off. You know, at this point, you don't want to be peaking, but now may be the time to start stepping on the gas and start aiming towards that, because we're still in a marathon, not in a sprint. But in talking to you, it seems like you feel like, okay, we've hit the gas a little bit. We're really starting to get where we need to be. Yeah, we've shifted. We've shifted into fifth gear. I mean, we're there. We're. This is the time. This is why you train all fall. This is what you do. There's no. There's no need to save anything at the, the, at this point. You're you're pushing to get better. Um, you're fi trying to find the right buttons to, to push. Um, and uh, you're getting to where you're starting to limit who's getting at bats and all that kind of stuff. And it's hard. It's hard as a coach. It's hard as a kid who's fighting to play. Um, but it is what it is. It's that time of year. And, and um, I like where this team is at. We have not played our best softball yet. And I'm starting to see it more and more each, each, each day. And that's what good, good teams do. They, they start to play their best softball late. So you look at Friday night, coach, you scratch and claw, which is you mentioned against everybody, you're going to have to do that on a Friday night. You turn right back around on Saturday. We've talked about how teams have responded, you know, from a, a difficult Friday night. Well, you you not only built on that Friday night, then you get the clean sweep. That's not easy in this league for anybody. No, it's not. It's it's not. It doesn't matter who you're who you're up against. Uh, every team in this conference has a lot has a lot of pride, has good athletes, and um, you know. We're in a good spot. We, you know, when you win that, fir that first game, it takes some pressure off. We had a chance to score a lot of runs on, on Friday night. We just didn't get, the, get, get them knocked in. And then uh, we got them knocked in on Saturday and, and Sunday. So winning that first game is a huge deal. Um, and it really breeds that confidence that you really need to play this game. 
For their efforts, Factor was the Big 12 Player of the Week, Carrie Everly, the Pitcher of the Week. And, you know, you said this to me uh, on radio this week, but that is, Carrie could be your Pitcher of the Week almost every single week. She's just that good. She really is. Uh, I mean, we've had um, some great pitchers here. Carrie's would be right up there at the top. Uh, she's just steady Eddie. You know what you're going to get. You know she's going to keep you in each game. She competes. She makes pitches when it counts. Um, and uh, just continues to lead our staff. You know, if I'm a young kid on this staff, I, I'm, I'd be taking notes. I'd, I'd have a notebook full of things of, of what she does and how she, she makes it happen. Um, and then Cheyenne just, uh, you know, has that big home run on, on Friday night. It just bleeds into the rest of the, the weekend, and, and it gets contagious. And, um, and uh, obviously our team was, uh, was feeling that, and, and um, it was fun to watch. Great stuff. Now you get ready for Baylor. You come back home, finally back in the Cowgirl Stadium. And, you know, obviously uh, it's been a special place. Now, Baylor has had some COVID issues, and they're trying to get in here and get, get going. So you haven't seen them in conference as much, but there's plenty of tape to, to prepare for this Baylor team. Yeah, we've got a lot of tape on them and their history. And even this year, they've still played 25 to 30 games. So, um, you know, they had one little, little hiccup here. I don't think it'll affect them much. Glenn's a quality quality coach and even a better guy and um, he'll have those kids prepared and um, they'll come in here and g give us a true test right now set for six o'clock on Friday two o'clock on Saturday two o'clock on Sunday coach appreciate it as always best luck in the ball game thank you it's going to be a fun series for the cowgirls and of course right now we've got spring football going on coming up next we're going to go to the field and we're going to talk to some of the players and the coaches that's coming up after the break slash Cowboys Ortho. Welcome in. I'm Jessica Mori, and we are getting the inside story on the defensive line with Coach Joe Bob Clements. Thank you for joining me, Coach. My pleasure. All right, first question. Trace Ford went down with an injury at mm -hmm. the end of the year. What is his status? He's progressing. He's doing well. Um, he's putting a lot of work in the weight room. He, he's, he's now progressed uh, to where he's running and getting in shape and doing some things. Uh, it's unfortunate we're not going to have him this spring, but we have some other young guys that, that are playing. You know, uh, he's actually one of three guys that's not going through spring ball, Tyron Irby and, uh, and Brock Martin as well, but they're all progressing well. And uh, you had some guys, um, you know, they got a lot of experience on the line last year, mm -hmm. returning starters coming back. What's it like having that experience? Uh, it's, it's nice um, because it, re it really gives you an opportunity with, with, with them having accumulated so much experience in reps that you really can kind of focus on some guys that might not have had the same amount of experience. A lot of young guys are getting a lot of work right now. And what are you expecting to see from those young guys? Oh, well, right now through three practices, just pleased with the really how, the, how they're retaining information. Uh, they're really handling the information well. Uh, they're, they're, they're performing well on the practice field. And granted, we don't have pads on yet, so for defensive linemen, it's a little bit uh, uncertain to actually see them compete with pads on. But just as far as the work ethic and their focus and, and being able to retain information and, and carry that out on the practice field has been impressive. You guys missed out on spring last year because of COVID, but we're back this year in 2021. What are you looking to accomplish this spring? Really development. You know, spring ball is a really critical time to kind of develop uh, your players, especially young players that might not have a lot of experience. Your older players kind of refine um, and develop some new strengths, uh, uh, maybe compensate for some weaknesses they might have had the, the previous season. Uh, and, and missing out on that, it I thought it really hurt just our overall development um, for some of our younger guys. You know, they, they weren't, they weren't, they didn't have themselves in position to help us last fall. And I think a lot of that can be contributed to what the, the disruption we had with COVID. Thank you so much. That is the inside story on the defensive line. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered 
All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. Welcome in. We are getting the inside story on the running backs with Coach John Wozniak. All right, Coach, uh, you got a lot of guys coming back. You're losing Chuba Hubbard, which is obviously a big deal. But you, when you heard LD Brown was coming back, how did that make you feel? Really good. Yeah, I was a much better coach all of a sudden. So he uh, he brings an element of speed to the room that we uh, that that every room could use. So that's a good thing. And how does his veteran leadership help you guys? Uh, well, he's just a guy that you can kind of know what to do. And so he's been there. He's been in the battle. So that's a good thing. And uh, so that that's where it helps us the most. And how nice is it coming into spring with you know at least three running backs that have seen quite a bit of playing time toward the end of the year? Uh, it's really good. It's hard to lose a guy like Chuba and, and hard to get, lose a guy like Justice before that. So uh, we've lost a lot of star power, but we got three guys coming back to have run for 100 yards or more in a Big 12 game. So that that's hard to say for anybody in the country. So so we're excited. A lot of depth, and we added another guy that'll be that'll, that'll help us a lot too. And last year you guys lost out on spring ball because of COVID, but we're back this year. What is your main focus this spring? Really for the uh, for the new guys, for Dominic Richardson just got here uh, before camp started. And so he really just had a couple weeks of practice, had to start playing in some games. So this is big for him as far as uh, picking up blitz, getting the little things of the, the offense. Jalen Warren the same way, he's just getting here from Utah State. So he's had four really good practices, but just learned the base offense. So uh, that, that's really a big focus for those two guys uh, being a little bit newer to the program. And then uh, the two older guys with Desmond and LD just got to keep their, um, keep their razor sharp. So uh, they can't lose their edge and got to keep improving every day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That is the inside story on the running backs. Decorative towel. It was a mess. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you Game day is a go. There's a Bud Light there. Welcome in. Let's get another look inside spring practice. I'm joined by sophomore wide receiver Brennan Presley. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. All right, so this is your first spring here with Cowboy football. You guys missed out on spring last year. How has spring been going for you? Uh, it's been going well. We've just been out here like working, just having fun, trying not to make things too, too difficult, just playing fast and you know just having fun together. And you're coming off of you know the best performance of your young career in the Cheez It Bowl. What's it like coming into spring now after having a performance like that? Oh, that's a lot. It's a lot of expectations you gotta you know live up to. But you know we've been trying to just do a good thing of just you know coming together, not making it about last season. This is a new season, so you know last season's over with. Just gotta work, put your head down, and you know nothing is given. So don't take advantage of anything. Just you know work for everything you want. And what's the receiver group looking like this spring? Uh, we're looking good. We're looking good. I mean, we're very young. Uh, I think Braden Johnson is the oldest one, but other than him, we're looking very, very good. Just very young. So it'll take some time just uh, to get that rhythm and chemistry with the quarterbacks. But I think it's going to be once we build that rhythm and flavor and chemistry up, then I think it'll be something special. And what is something you're working on specifically this spring? Uh, just you know, a deeper understanding of the playbook. Just route recognition, coverages, the mental side of the game more than the physical. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. That is sophomore wide receiver Brennan Presley.